uh, in the last video we already learned about how to save data to the local database and also we send data to the remote uh, database so in this video uh, we are going to learn about how to sync the data between the local sqlite database and the remote uh, mysql database so if the user adds some data to the table that means if there is no network connections are available the data saved to the local database and if there is network connections are available even if the app not in the foreground we have to send that data to the remote server so that means uh, we need to monitor the network status of the device if there is a uh, network connections are available at, in that situation uh, we need to search the local database for the data need to be synced and <coughs> if connections are available we need to send that data to the remote server so for that here i'm going to create another java class with the class name uh, network monitor and this class extends a broadcast receiver so here uh, you need to implement a method you need to implement a method called on receive now we need to register this broadcast receiver class inside the android manifest.xml so open manifest file and within the application tag here i am going to receive i am going to register that broadcast receiver so add a new receiver element here the class name is network monitor and for the receiver here i am going to add an indent filter for the indent filter we have to specify the name name of the indent filter and here I specify the name of the intent filter. Here it is connection dot connectivity change. So if there is any change on the network connection of the device, uh, this particular uh, receiver receive the broadcast. So go to the network monitor dot Java. So if there is any change on the network connection of the device, uh, this method will invoke. So here first we have to check whether whether uh, there is an internet connection available or not. So go to main activity dot Java. Uh, here we already make a method that check the connection connectivity status. So I copy that entire method and paste it here. And for this method here we need one parameter. It's a context object. So this method will return true if there is a network connection is available. So first we have to check that one. And for this method uh, we need to pass one parameter is a context object. So if there is network connection is available in that case. Uh, we need to check the local database for the data need to be sync. If there is some data for sync, in that case, we have to retrieve that data from the SQLite database and send it to the remote server. So first, open the database, so DB helper. New DB helper and pass the context as parameter. Uh, now create some variables for SQLite database and DB helper dot get writable database. So now we need to retrieve the information from the SQLite database. So for that we need some cursor variable. So DB helper dot uh, read from local uh, database and pass the SQLite database object as parameter. Now we can check the we can check the result. For that, here I'm going to use a while loop. If cursor dot move to next. So here we need to check some condition. If uh, here I declare some variables in uh, sync status. 
and get the data from the cursor so cursor dot get in cursor dot get column index and db contract dot sync status here I'll check the condition if sync status equal to db contract dot sync failed sync status failed that means that particular row is need to be synced with the remote server so in that case we need to get the name from the local database cursor dot get string cursor dot get column index db contract dot name now we can create a string request a volley string request first pass the request method here the method is post method now pass the server url so db contract dot server url now specify the listeners here is the response listener uh, now specify the error listener now here we need to specify the request body for that you need to override one more method called the get params in this method create some variables for map here the key is string type and the value is also string type and specify a name for the parameter params i name it as params new hash map okay now add value to this parameter so params dot put first specify the key here the key is name now specify the data here the data available on this variable called the name and finally return that particular variable from this method finally we can add this string request to the request queue so my singleton dot get instance and pass the context add it to request queue and add the request queue to the request queue and now we can handle the response from server so here the response is a json object so json object equal to new json object and pass the response uh, here uh, you need to add some try catch Uh, now get the response from server uh, json object dot get string here the key is a response now check the response if a response equal to db contract dot sync status ok Uh, sorry that is wrong that is wrong if response dot equals this is a string if response dot equals okay that means the data successfully updated on the uh, remote server in that case we can update the database that means that particular data is successfully updated on the remote server so we have to update the sync status on the local database so you can call the method db helper dot update local database first you have to pass the name second one you have to pass the sync status so db contract dot sync status ok and finally pass the sqlite database object <clears throat> after the successful updation of the database we can close the database so db helper dot close uh, if the application in the foreground we need to update the 
user interface that means we need to update the recycler view for that here uh, we have to send our own broadcast so we have to send a broadcast and we have to receive that broadcast from main activity uh, for that here i'm going to declare some variables public static final string ui update broadcast specify value for it use the package name uh, ui update broadcast now go to the network monitor.java so if the data successfully update with the database and here uh, we update the local database at the same time if the application in the foreground we need to update the user interface so for that here we are here i'm going to send a broadcast so by using the context you can send the broadcast from here a new indent and here specify the indent filter name it is available inside the db contract ui update broadcast okay now we need to receive this broadcast from main activity so go to main activity dot java here i am going to declare some variables for broadcast receiver i name it as broadcast receiver now initialize that broadcast receiver so broadcast receiver equal to new broadcast receiver here we have the method called on receive uh, when we send the broadcast from the network monitor class this method will invoke so now we have to register the broadcast for that here we need to override some more method so we do override a method called on start Uh, from this method here i'm going to register the broadcast so broadcast receiver dot uh, register receiver and for this method you need to pass two parameters first one is the broadcast receiver object and second one is the corresponding indent filter name so here the object is broadcast receiver now specify the indent filter new indent filter and get the filter name from the contract class update ui update broadcast now we need to unregister from the broadcast if user leave the app that means we call the on pause method uh, in that case uh, we have to unregister the broadcast so unregister a receiver and pass the broadcast object here it is broadcast receiver so now from the on receive method here you can simply call the uh, read from local storage so when you call the read from local storage method it will clear the data from the array list then read the information from the local database and update the array list and finally uh, we call the method called the notify data set change on the adapter this will update the recycler view okay now we can test it okay now run the application Okay, now here the application available on this virtual device and now there is no data available on the local server sorry on the uh, SQLite database now open the web server here is the web server now there is no data available on the application server now here I am going to add some information add some name here and submit 
So here the sync status shows OK. That means now the data successfully saved on SQLite and MySQL database. We can check it here. And here the data available on the application server. I try to add one more data. That data is also available on the application server. Now here I'm going to switch on the airplane mode. So now there is no internet connectivity available on this uh, virtual device. Now try to add some data. <clears throat> so here I add some data and the, here the sync status is failed. So this data need to be synced with the application server. Now try to add some more data. Uh, this data is also need to be synced with the application server. Now here the airplane mode is on. Now I turn it off. So now there is network connections are available. So here we can see it will automatically update the UI. And here the sync status shows that this data successfully sync with the application server. We can check that one. And here you can see that data is now available on the application server. Now we can check some other conditions. So here I enable the airplane mode. Now there is no internet connectivity. I am going to add some more data. So here I add some more data. So here these three data need to be synced with the application server uh, because there is no internet connections are available on the application server now. Now I just remove that application from the memory. Uh, try to open it again. So here still it shows that this data need to be synced with the uh, application server. Again I remove that application from the device memory. Now I'm going to disable the airplane mode. Now for this device there is network connections are available but the application not in the foreground. Now here I'm going to open that application and here it shows that all the data are now synced with the application server. We can check the application server and here all the data are now available on the app server. This is how we sync the SQLite database with the MySQL database on a remote server. I hope you understand all these concepts. Please subscribe this channel now for getting more Android tutorial updates. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.